that's our plan for this year. And I'm gonna come up with a name for them. Uh, maybe we'll have you guys put in some, some ideas for names. He's a big, wide frame, short time, but great big brows. And he's six or seven this year. So you guys come up with a, a name for it. Whoever names him, name that we pick, we'll you know, send you a brand new reveal 3.0 Pro. So uh, you guys all send in names for him. I'll, I'll put up some pictures of him. And the name that we pick, I'll send you a new camera. So think of some names here for us. These cameras have been unreal. The new app on it, everything about it is just phenomenal. You see it's already found the service it wants. I bet there's a lot of people that want to know your password. <laughs> hey everyone, thanks again for tuning in to our YouTube channel here. Uh, starting off another episode um, for a totally different deer. And you know, this year we've had some of our big deer from last year are here again, but a lot of them aren't. Like right now, a lot of them haven't shown up, but I think some of it is due to we've had such great rain and stuff this year that you know they don't have to come to the feeders and stuff that we, where we normally take our inventory. They could be you know just out in fields and stuff. So I'm still hoping, and there's still new ones showing up all the time, but this specific spot right here, we have a buck that's six years old now, big frame, big brows, but he's more of a management deer. Um, and we were gonna hunt him last year, but he broke his brow off because he's got just tremendous brows, I mean, great you know, nine, 10 inch brows and big mass. He just has shorter points. So this will be a deer we'll be looking for either for myself or Tiffany, or we got a couple of buddies of mine that drew, but um, this is a deer we kind of want to target for sure to get to get him out of here. So what we have here, you can see I'm standing right here by the tactic cam. I'm going to switch this over to a new 3.0, but I got my feeder right here with the pellets and stuff in there. And what I'm going to do is so we always take these feeders out like 10 days before the season when we're up in, you know, out, out west hunting, I have my guys come and pull them all out of here. So what I'm gonna do is, since that deer is used to coming right into here right now, and you can see this bay, this was, I planted this in soybeans. And this needs to be limed and it's got clay type soil here on this bay and stuff. So I just sprayed it yesterday to get rid of all that. And there'll be some beans in here, but not enough there I'm gonna, you know, it's gonna be worth anything. So I'm gonna put amazing grains in this with, uh, clover as a you know and use the amazing grains as a cover crop so this is all nice clover bay next year then i'll put a big strip of perfect 10 up there too so i'll have you know my grains here you know our our wheat and winter wheat and peas and things like that so what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to i'm going to be taking this feeder out of here i'm just going to move it way up there up like where the beans are where i don't think they're going to make it anyway and part of that is whenever you have a feeder, the deer will come to that, then they'll just eat out whatever field is close to it. And that's if you remember back from a few episodes ago where we were set up for, we cleared out the little bay and stuff for Crown Royal, and we kept, we didn't put any feeder there. We wanted the feeders far away, moving them away from there. And then when those feeders come out, we can cut that corn and pull all those deer out of that same piece of woods up into that little piece right there so they're not wiping out our corn right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a water trough in here. I'm gonna dig one out. We got one of the grizzly water troughs right where that dirt patch is i'll dig that out and get the water here and since there isn't hardly any food here i want to keep that feeder going because they've already wiped out these beans and stuff so i'm going to take that feeder i'm going to move it up to where the beans are because i don't care if they wipe that out i just don't want them wiping this bay out i'm going to put a water trough here and then we'll spray all this back here and i'll get this all a nice beautiful clover and wheat field for this hunting season and you know brassicas up there but we want to just keep this camera here and just hope that this deer, he's always coming up here, he's used to coming to this feeder, hopefully he'll come up to the water. And if he keeps hitting that water, because this is a perfect spot for it, because there's no water anywhere around here. So I know that he's got to go a long ways for water. Our closest pond has got to be, man, six, eight hundred yards away at least. So if I have water here, and if he comes right here, he's gonna go up there to the feeder anyway. I just wanna get him used to using this water, knowing it's there, because a lot of times those water troughs, sometimes they come right to him, but other times it can take him a little bit longer to get on water. So we'll put this water trough here and hopefully get him using that. So by the time we pull the feeders out, that this will all be beautiful, you know, amazing grains and clover. You know, the amazing grains will be the cover crop for it and have brassicas out there and hopefully We'll get a setup here. We're just kind of looking at trees, and just like we talked about in the past, you always want to find a tree first before you do any food plots. But since this is already here, there's one tree that's pretty big back there. I might have to cut down some of these small oak trees in front of it, but that's still a pretty far shot, you know, from there up to here, like 40 yards. So I think what I'll do is that all these trees were all planted 
oak trees along this edge, they're all pretty small still. I think it's like perfect for a redneck that we can stick one behind those cedar trees right there and then we'll make a path because this is like a big point of trees that comes. We can go in where we park and we'll make a path right through the woods and boom, pop right in there. We could get up in that thing behind those patches of cedars right there. We could get up in the thing with deer and turkeys and everything right in the field. So I think, you know, we could do it on either side, but I think early season, we're gonna count on it to be a lot of south winds. I mean, through the whole year, every time it's warmer, you know, you're only gonna get the, you know, the north winds on a cold front, which is always the best, but getting over to that side of this bay right here, you're gonna have to walk across the field there. And it's just it's just better for popping in this side where you don't, you don't expose yourself to anything in these fields. So I think we'll look at that tree, and we might put a tree stand in there anyway, but for longer shots, but I'll also have, you know, like my buddy Murphy or somebody comes down or want a little bit closer shot there. And there's something where we can actually shoot the water trough that comes out and hits that. Um, you know, we can get a shot from there. So since it's getting late in the day, we want to go video some uh, some velvet bucks too. I think we just had to come and lay out this plan a little bit and look at it. Go come in the morning and grab the skid steer, pull this out of here, get that water in here, and then just get them knowing, okay, the feeder's up there, and just kind of get them trained to that water first. So when all that, when your feeders and everything else have to be out of here, you know, in September, that he still needs the water there, and these food, this food plot will be, you know, good right then. So that's our plan for this year. I know we got to come up with a name for him. Uh, it will have you guys put in some, some ideas for names. He's big, wide frame, short time, but great big brows, and he's six or seven this year. So you guys come up with a name for it. Whoever names him, name that we pick, will you know, send you a new reveal, brand new reveal 3.0 Pro. So um, you guys all send in names for him. I'll, I'll put up some pictures of him, and the name that we pick, I'll send you a new camera. So think of some names here for us. Okay, well last night we came in here and kind of made the plan, seeing kind of what we wanted to do. So I got the skid steer in here and I got the, my player's 1500 with the water tank. And it's, it's crazy, you know, just looking at, just not sure about, you know, all that weight on this, on this range you can see, it's not even squatting it down. If you put that on a regular one, it would be just squatting that thing down and drove it over here. You can't, can't even tell it's on there. So that's the difference between having that 1500 HD. I mean, they still make all the other ones. But I look at it and having that now, I find that I never even use my trucks anymore. With that Ranger 1500, the air conditioning, it can be 90 degrees out, you're perfectly cool in there, absolutely no dust, comfortable ride. I feel I'd never even take my trucks anywhere, I just take that 1500 and see hauling that big water tank and stuff like that, doesn't even feel like it's on there. But so we got the water here, I got the skid steer, I'm gonna move that feeder and it works, you know, I think it's gonna work good because when we left yesterday, we were here kind of just assessing what side we can put stands on and everything. Half hour after we left the very first deer here, whoop, was, was our boy who hopefully you guys will come up with a name for him. And then even this morning, he's just in here so regular. So what I want to do, I want to make sure I don't lose him because we have lots of other food plots on here and other feeders, it's a big farm. We have other feeders and stuff. So I don't want to, you know, move this feeder too far, something for him to, you know, where he, where he just starts going to a different one. I want to keep him here, so I'm going to, put that, the water tank here, and I might just put some corn on the ground there just to make sure, okay, there's still something there, but I'm just gonna put it just at the edge up there. So they'll still be able to see it and everything fine because I just want it to the point where I can, it'll be out of the way when I do the turnip piece. And then once we plant the turnips, I think I'll pick it up and I'll move it into the turnip piece. So it'll just be a little farther even yet. And then when I do all this in the amazing grains and peas and our clover in here, um, you know, it won't be in the way for that. And then of course, 10 days before the season starts, we'll get it right out of here. But I have a feeling, you know, with the water here, and once we get the clover and amazing grains and turnips and everything in here, um, they won't, they never need the feeder. They don't need it now, there's food everywhere, but it's just a way to get these feeders, a way to get protein into them and keep them healthy and keep ticks off them and all that stuff and to take inventory. But once we get, once we kind of have our, our plan all, all set up, you know, the feeders, we don't, you don't use those at all to hunt them. We know where we're gonna hunt these deer. We'll just, once we get that out of there, this will all be lush and green. They'll be coming to the water. 
and everything. So we could take it really out after any time once we get all this stuff planted. But uh, as of now, we're gonna keep it here to so make sure we keep that deer here. And then we'll just keep monitoring it over the summer and hopefully he just stays coming to the water and then going out to the field. So we don't have the stands up with us. We'll get the water trough and this moved and all that stuff in first. And then we'll come back and get the stand up. I might fudge that, you know, that feeder's right on the top of the crown here and I'd like it to be nice and level but I might fudge it just this way a little bit just so it's a little bit closer because that is about 40 yards and it is a little little farther of a shot so I might fudge it this way just a smudge anyway but at least we get that in and get that filled up and then I'll probably come back in and disc this up and everything maybe even today and get get it fertilized because as you can see the beans didn't hardly come up here it's got to be a fertilization issue we've had all the rain in the world and even though we fertilized it and I did put a, a bunch of pell lime on here and everything as well. So I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna have to go re-fertilize it with all the micronutrients and some of the some of the stuff and do everything I can right here. I need to make sure that this grows good. So we'll do everything we possibly can for it and get this planted and, uh, and we'll get the stand up. But right now let's get that feeder out of here. There's any boards under there? I don't see any. Yeah, we might not have needed them. I don't see any there. As I put it up a little farther than I was originally thinking, this is up in the beans, as you can see how short these beans are, but they're all eaten off. They may just be a, so many deer out here that eaten it off that reason why they haven't gone up that far, but I already sprayed this so these weeds should be gone in a couple days. But the nice thing is when you come in around here, we can come in just in the, in the entrance up there and sneak around that corner. We can get velvet footage of them up here. So where we couldn't really down there because you have to come all the way around the corner and go back into that bay. You can see the, that little bay there, how it's a perfect little runway into the big field here you know for them to, them to come out and then work their way up here especially if that bay is going to be in greens and then have some turn a patch of turnips here and then keep the beans and hopefully if i can hit these with our rev line and stuff and get these to come up enough at least to put some beans on them it's a big field so i don't need you know them to put i don't need 70 bushel beans on this i just need to make 20 or 30 and it's you know a six acre field that's you know plenty and plus this farm we've got hundreds of hundreds of acres of food plots on it everywhere else too so i already sprayed this once these weeds all die we'll spray this with the rev line be able to get velvet footage here i'll do a turnip patch right up to it here and from back there we'll do the amazing grains so it'd be a double whammy with moving it up here it's easy to get velvet footage of them right there too so. Okay, so I want to keep that same camera, but I might fudge it a little bit this way, but I'm thinking maybe what I'll do is put a rubbing post over this way farther to that, closer to that tree. Getting that oak tree? No, nah, I gotta get that one, because these are all too small. The only big one is over there. So it's like 40 yards probably to here, so I'll fudge it a little bit this way.
Yeah, it's gonna bring that mini excavator over here, but then you got you have to move the you have to move the. Yes, it's a little low on this. <clears throat> yeah, we can just throw some of the dirt over there. It's just. <laughs> yeah, we can just kind of level it up with with this whatever's in the bottom here. So you think we need more on that end? I think. We're I think good. we should be good now, now that you get that moved right there. You can see why stuff doesn't grow great here. It's just drinking this whole knob is red clay, so it's... You take some of that by your right foot and pull it in this little... Yeah, it can boots on so it works. Go for that. All right, let's just see what we got here. We should be able to level it up good and... I'm gonna pull it this way as hard as you can. Yeah, I probably put it right up against that grass or as much as you can and then... Yeah. yeah. Anybody have a bubble level on your phone? Yeah. Yeah, this right here. Yeah, we can just push this down a little bit too. Okay. We'll put some, we'll be able to tell when we put water in there if it's, if we need to push something down or not. So you probably have to put a little bit of water in there to tell the, how level it is. Level. Yeah, you gotta crunch that side in a little bit under that water. Push it out a little bit. It's not like a big sides on it. There's those Rubbermaid ones, they just never, and they start to after like, but a long time for them to get into those Rubbermaid ones. All right, well, we got the, the water trough in here. Um, we, we just fudged it a little bit towards the stand, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a, a post and put a rubbing post another five or six yards over here to make that, you know, if they hit the water and they want to hit that rubbing post, we'll get a bunch of scrapes and, and there, so we have at least like a 20 yard shot from there. So right now I'm gonna go back and look at the soil samples that we took on this and just, uh, you know, see what we put on it and see what we could be doing here. Maybe another micro pack with the borons and stuff like that in here. Um, but we'll get this thing fertilized and then uh, disc it up and uh, we'll probably right away plant the turnip and there are the perfect 10 piece up top and we'll wait probably another few weeks to do the clover and and uh, amazing grains down here. But we got the camera, I attached the cam on here, I'm gonna grab another one and put it up on the feeder just to make sure that that our boy is still coming here and going there. But either way, we'll get this refertilized for stuff we're doing down here. I'm gonna bring that field all the way back here where we never had it before either, just have it come all the way around this whole thing and even get this all set up. Cause this deer is super, super regular. I have a feeling, you know, depending on weather and all that kind of stuff that we could probably get a shot at this deer almost opening day. So we'll keep moving on this and, uh, and start getting working on fields. <laughs> 